Hi everybody, Martin at Flick and Feathers again today, and I'm tying another wee wet fly. It's a blue Zulu. Um, popular fly for the folk that are fishing for the wild browns um, and the sea trout in the locks. It's a good fly to have in your box. Um, and you'll catch stock rainbows and all that on it as well. If you fish it where they are. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone that wants to support the channel, get access to the members only content, and be entered into the giveaways. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button, or even share the video. It's very appreciated. So I've got my hook in my vise, this is a size 12 Camazan B175. Tie these probably like 8s down to 14s. And I've started some black Unity art. And I just at the length of the body where the body's going to start, I'm going to just catch in my tail on the way down. And it's just some red wool. And I've waxed my thread so there's plenty of grip. Um, it will no pull out or nothing, you don't need to worry about that. Now my thread wraps are tight. And I'm coming right back to the start of the bend. Just trim that waist a wee bit there. And then I'll trim my tail basically at the back of the hook. I like a wee compact tail on my Zulu. So, once that's tied in, I'm going to come in with my ribbon. I'm using a flat silver tinsel. Um, you could use oval, and it's probably a bit more durable, but I like the flat. It seems to, I feel like the flat silver is a bit shinier, and you just get the wee glint peeping through a bit better. Um, just tie that in. Body as black silver. obviously use another black dubbin if you want, it doesn't really matter. Um, although I do like seal fill or something. There is something about the kind of straggly effects you get when you brush it that I quite like when the wet flies. So just sweep in it and it's going forward towards the rear. Ready for my body hack when I'm using just a wee cheap Chinese Indian uh, hen neck dyed black. And it can be a bit of a struggle. Um, I mean, even with the genetic hen necks, it can be a bit of a struggle sometimes to get a good, a decent size feather with the barbs of the right length for like a, a fly smaller than about a 10. So I've just stripped this hackle stem, just quick catch it in. A bit more wax. Lock that in place. Now the stem's a bit thick, so I'll need to cut it. That's fine. Normally I would try and tie a hackle with my hand, but these are quite small. Um, so I'll use my hackle plier. And you just need to be careful. The stems are very weak on these, and sometimes they'll break. If that happens, it happens. Uh, Sometimes you can save the hackle, sometimes you need to tie a new one in. So just kind of be gentle. So I've wound my hackle back. I've got a turn at the front and probably three or four down the body there. That's plenty. And I've just got to come up with my rib. And just ignore the hackle, don't worry, you'll see it looks like I'm crushing a lot of this hackle. Well, I am. Um, it doesn't matter. When you get to the front, come, in for, come ahead of the, the hackle fibres, just sweep anything back. Get a full turn of tinsel there, that sort of locks the hackle out of the way. Take the hackle pliers away. Turn this waist and 
Just get a rub and just take another few turns right back there. Just get all that secured. And then, I'll come in with the Velcro, as usual. And then I'll just grab that tip, break it away. It's actually not broken at the right part, so I'll come in, trim it out. You don't need to be that fussy really, but head hackle, I'm using just a another wee cheap hen hackle. Dyed like a teal blue. If you can get fluorescent blue dye, that's quite good as well. So I've tied that in with the tip. Two, I've only put a turn or two there over it. I'm folding the tip back. And I'll take my three wraps back. And that's enough as lock it in place. Just hold it tight and snap the tip away. And just go forward. Fold the hackle as you go. Until these are quite quite fine these uh, feathers they've not got a lot of they've not got a very heavy barb so I need a wee maybe a wee bit more than I would not you would normally want to put on tons wise I think it was about four tons there just to get the colour but you need to, you need to do that when you're tying like you need to judge the hackle you know if it was a heavier Thicker hackle, a t two or three tons would probably be enough, but I ended up with the extra turn there. I'll tie that and I'll fold it back and I'll just take the thread to the eye and then tie back over it nice and tight. Keep your thread tight, just snap that away. And then I've nearly got my head shaped just from winding it back, but I'll finish it with a whip finish. And you can put, you can see here, I'm going to put quite a few turns on here, just to, I'm just shaping it, I end up putting a wee, maybe three extra turns in, more than I normally would, just to get the wee extra shape at the front of the head there. You don't need to do that, your four turns and just leave the head and varnish, it's fine, but I just want it the, just like the, the nice shape. And there you go, that's the, the blue Zulu. You can tie them without the blue hackle. You could change the front hackle if you want. But it's a good fly. Um, I mean, especially northwest of Scotland, west of Scotland, it's a good, it's a pop, still quite a, a popular part. And well worth having. So, I hope that was useful, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below, and subscribe to the channel. Tight lines guys, bye.